Um, so what are the possibilities that we can um, that we can do with this kind of technology? There are brain changes that are happening to people who are the uh, first inhabitants, the, the first indigenous people in this virtual world, the I generation. And she noted studies that the brain is changing. Well, of course the brain is changing. We're moving into a completely different world. We're moving into a world where there is an instant adaptation to that world. We don't know how that adaptation should be. So of course the brain's going to change. We shouldn't be all alarmed about that. We should try and limit it and let it go slow. But we have to realize that we are the adapting animal. We've adapted really well. And um, at the moment, we're not at adapting too well, but we've adapted really well over a long period of time. And um, so Kevin Kelly, and I can very much advise that you read this, has come up with this notion of the, uh, of the mirror world that already existed, where Google Maps is creating a three-dimensional world that we can all eventually move through and that will have a sense of place. Walking the um, plank had a sense of place to it. Now, um, when something has a sense of place to it, it can be used for dream incubation. Um, I have uh, taken people um, in, to many places in the world, to the caves in France and to uh, Iceland and to many different places to see how people dream. So to connect this notion of um, the virtual world with the imaginal world, because we're both talking about a dream, about a world of mirror. And so can we use this mirror world that is now being created for dream incubation so that we begin to merge this world of the third, this world that Corbin is talking about, and this um, world of virtuality that actually is fully embodied. So it's an embodied virtual world. And I think that that is possible. I believe that it's possible. The first step should be that we are going to be together with a group, and I'm very interested in doing it um, groups all over the world, if that is possible, with very very uh, various people in a place that has a very strong sense of place and that in that place to do dream incubation and see what kind of dreaming comes from that place to not stay in our notion of is it archetype or is it algorithm by the way talking about that um jung's uh um uh Mysterium conjunctionis is based on an algorithm. The algorithm was the algorithm of the Rosarium Philosophorum that was portrayed as the marriage of sun and moon, which was the algorithm, the search engine made in the 16th century, the search engine to find the information of um, uh, the information of alchemy because there was so much information that you had to have a search engine in it, and Sergei Brin would recognize it immediately as a sorting program. Um, but so I want to get out of uh, the oppositional thinking and I want to go and see what happens when we go into this space that is fully embodied where we feel that we are somewhere, where we feel that we are together with people from all different places and that we can then see what the dreaming brings there, and maybe that will inform us further. The next step would be what Steve and I are talking about. If we can do a healing sanctuary, I'm doing healing sanctuaries, I'm going tomorrow morning to Mexico. We use this dreaming for the healing process. So that would be the next step. And I have to disclose that I'm very interested in doing things globally because my wife lives in Sydney and I live here and I'm a commuter. So, um, I'm very interested in seeing what happens when you bring people from different places together in a new place, because there's now such a sense of embodied place that we can start using it and seeing what happens when dreaming happens there, not in the caves of France, but in this embodied environment and see what dreaming does to that.